So I'm out here today in north central Washington hunting burbot through the ice. Typically these fish spawn in February and March. And I'm using a heavy spoon that glows in the dark and has a rattle. It's called a trout and pout spoon. Coating that with uh, some crawfish oil and uh, tipping that with a night crawler. Let's see if we can drum up some burbot here. I've seen one on the graph so far, so I'm hopeful that as it gets darker and they get more active in the evening and twilight hours, I can get one to come up through the ice. There we go. Beautiful. What a cool animal. That's great. <clears throat> okay guys, I got my one burbot here. Um, at least I got a decent one. Uh, these fish are equally strange to fillet, so I thought I'd go through some of the basic fillet procedures for getting fillets off these, your meat off these burbot, boneless. Um, you actually end up with three boneless fillets, so it's a little bit different than you'd expect and I'm going to take you through those steps. What you need is a good sharp uh, flexible fillet knife and then um, some kind of heavy duty pliers. Um, what works really well actually is a pair of fishing pliers that has the split ring pliers built into the end of it but I lost my pair so I'll just try and make do with these heavy pliers here. Alright let's get to work. Oh I also have a bowl of just um, salt water here that I can throw the fillets into when I'm done and that will uh, help get rid of some of the slime because these are slimy fish and some of that blood too. Okay so the first step we're going to do is make a complete incision all around the entire head but we don't want to cut into the meat we just want to cut the skin just so just skin deep. see I got a skin cut all the way around that entire fish. Oop, there's a little spot I missed right there in the back. There we go. Okay, all the way around. Now we're going to grab a hold of this skin with a pair of pliers and we're going to peel it back like a sock coming off the fish. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab those pliers and you can use the pectoral fins there just grab a hold of that skin and start peeling it back if you start to get too much meat attached to the skin you can just use your knife to cut it so that you don't get a lot of meat loss you can see it's just coming back all along here and you can use the gills and pectoral fin to sort of give you some leverage. Get a little bit of meat hanging up right there, so I can use a knife. Just cut that. It's pretty normal to do so. 
Just keep working it back all the way. Okay, then we need to remove the fins. So we have the top long pectoral fin. And you can actually just grab down towards the base of that with those pliers. And you should be able to just pull it off. A lot of times it'll just zipper off. You can do it right and sometimes it comes off in pieces which makes it take longer Let's see if I can use a longer pair and get the zipper off there we go Oop, thought I had it That's how you want it to come off in one big piece like that. Make sure you get the little front part of the dorsal fin too. Peel that off. And then you're going to flip it over and do the same thing with the anal fin. Okay. So now what we're going to do is cut along that spine with that knife down until we hit the ribs and then we're going to cut out away following the ribs so there's a nice easy line to follow where you pulled that dorsal fin out just make an incision downward you'll feel the spine there you go you'd have to make a bit of an incision up by the head And then just follow those ribs out and the fillet will fall away. You can then continue that all the way on down the back, down to the tail. And then I'll just go along the spinal cord and fillet like I would any other fish from that point down. And then cut back across. And there's one fillet. And then do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, and then, unlike a lot of other fish, there's this big triangle of meat on the belly. In order to get to that, you just cut across the top of the body there, from pectoral fin to pectoral fin. And then just cut out along the edge of these rib bones that you trimmed out towards. And then it'll peel away. Just trying to stay on the edge of those rib bones there. And there you go. All the way down to the cloaca. And there's another nice triangle of meat. There's a little bit of meat, a strip here along the belly that you can try and get to. That a lot of people forget about. I like to grab that on both sides. You just 
cut straight down along each side. Just a little strip. All right, so we have that burbot all cleaned, ready to go, and we got the meat soaking in the brine here. So I'll take this out, dry it off to get that slime off there, and uh, ready to cook it up. Okay, now that I've got my boneless fillets uh, drained and dried, I'm going to check them real quickly for any bones along the dorsal and anal fins there. I don't feel anything. I'm going to dice these up quickly, put them in a lightly oiled uh, glass pan, and I'm going to throw this in the oven for five to seven minutes with uh, about 400 degrees um, on a preheated oven. I'm just going to basically just get these cooked just through and then I'm going to flake the meat out and form them into patties um, next. So I'll quickly do this. I really like my Victornix knife for this. It just works really well with fish. Right, then very quickly just salt, lightly salt the fish. That will help firm it up while the oven is preheating. As well as hit it with some black pepper. And you should be good. So once the ovens heat up, I like to have that salt sitting on the fish for about 20 minutes. It helps draw moisture out, firms it up even better. I'll throw it in the oven and bake it through for five to seven minutes. Okay, while the fish is finishing up in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and make the sauce that we're gonna mix uh, it in with the patties. So first thing we need to do is get our ingredients, which will be lemon juice, Yogurt, Greek yogurt, plain, non-flavored, mayo, Oop, there's the fish, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the oven here, pull the fish out, so I'm going to let that fish cool so I can flake it out just a bit. Let me get that out of your guys' way. Okay, so lemon juice, Greek yogurt, mayo, spicy brown mustard. Uh, since we're doing kind of a, a spicy version of this today, we're doing some sriracha, paprika, got some green onions, and an egg. So I want to do about a tablespoon of the yogurt. This can just be approximate. It doesn't have to be exact. You also want to do about a tablespoon of the mayo. Mustard, one tablespoon as well. And a tablespoon of the lemon juice, a teaspoon of the sriracha. You can go more if you like spicy food. Some paprika. green onion, and then you'll want to beat that egg up a little bit before stirring it in. We'll just break it up, get that yolk busted up, scrambled. Pour that in there. You can also add whatever else you want to. If you like garlic or dill, it's a good choice as well. Now you're going to mix all this up. Some nice color to it. Then you're going to take, once the fish meat has cooled, you're going to take and flake that in here with a full cup of panko breadcrumbs. You can use um, any kind of breadcrumbs you want, or if you want to use crushed saltine crackers or whatever, it's really a personal choice. So I'm just going to let that fish cool for a second, and then we're going to flake it up and put it in here. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the bits of the burbot that I baked in the oven and throw them in here with all the sauce. It's a nice firm meat. It doesn't fall apart, so it's nice. 
gives it a good texture. Some people call it poor man's lobster, but that's a bit of a reach. Definitely has the texture of lobster, but not the taste. I'm going to put that in here, and then we're going to add those panko breadcrumbs. And then we're going to mash this all up together with that sauce. And so you see now when I press it down, it starts to stick together. That's where we want it to be before we bread it lightly in cornmeal and fry it. I like doing the cornmeal just because it gives it a nice color and a different bit of texture. Alright, next we're going to make a quick sauce that we're going to use to garnish our patties once we get done frying those. So again, taking about a tablespoon of mayo. Tablespoon of Greek yogurt. Teaspoon of dill. Probably go a little bit more. A dash of lemon juice. And then some more sriracha. And you can go as spicy as you want on this. I'm going to go light since I'm a lightweight. And mix that up. And put that in the fridge and let it cool. Until you're ready to serve dinner. Okay, so we want to get uh, some oil or butter heated up in the pan. Uh, you want medium high uh, for searing the patties. And then we're going to go ahead and form the patties and lightly bread them in corn flour or cornmeal, your choice. So just take about a one to two teaspoon size patty, form it in your hands, make it nice and firm. Like that, and then just lightly dust it in the cornmeal, and just keep doing that until you've used up all of your mix. Now depending on what oil you use, you want to be careful. Um, butter and olive oil can burn at a lower temperature. So if you're not sure, go with canola because uh, it burns at a higher temperature. But in general, you can have, I'll have my stove setting at somewhere around a seven or eight and go a little higher with canola. And we'll just want to brown those in about four or five minutes, flip them and do another three to five minutes uh, depending on how fast they're cooking and then uh, dollop some of that garnish sauce that we made earlier on top and chow down. Just go ahead and get it flipped over after I get a nice brown golden color on the one side and let them cook on the flip side for just a little bit longer. Go ahead and add a little bit of that sauce we made on the top of each. Garnish with a wedge of lemon. And if you really want to be artsy, you can add a little 
drop of sriracha on top. And then go ahead and serve with whatever you'd like to. I recommend uh, some sort of potato and vegetable and then nice cold beer.